Okay, so let's look in a little more detail at the lower stratosphere and at the troposphere. So for the troposphere, we're near the surface of the Earth, and we have solar radiation coming in. Some of it gets reflected straight away, some of it gets absorbed, and the troposphere is mostly transparent for the solar radiation. So it can go through and back out without interacting too much with the gas in the troposphere. Yeah, so you can imagine this, all this gas here, the air of the troposphere. And then we have infrared long-wave radiation coming back out. And the thing is, the troposphere is optically thick. And what does that mean? It means that it absorbs almost all infrared radiation. Yeah? It's still transparent to most of the solar radiation and the visible light but it absorbs the infrared. We say that it is opaque for infrared radiation. And that means that this infrared radiation heats the atmosphere near the surface. But if you heat the atmosphere near the surface, that means that you will have hot air near the surface and then cooler air above. And as you know, hot air is lighter than cool air. So the hot air will try and rise up and the cool air will drop. And so my configuration is not stable and we get convection. And that's why it's called the troposphere because it has vertical convection, it turns over. And if we look at the temperature profile in the troposphere, if there was no convection and the temperature profile was just by the balance of the incoming solar and the outgoing infrared radiation and the gas couldn't move around, then you would really have only the gas very close to the surface here heating up and you would drop off in temperature very rapidly. So a temperature profile that would be created by a radiative equilibrium would have a very steep gradient. So in this case T drops off quickly with height when the balance is radiative. But that's not actually what's the case in the troposphere because the hot air rises and the cool air drops down. So as a result, your temperature profile is less steep. Yeah? So you still get warmer air further up in height. So in reality, it would look more like this. So you have a convective equilibrium because cool air sinks, warm air rises and you have a less quick drop in T of Z. And so this is a roughly linear slope that can be described mathematically as the change in temperature with the change in height dt dz is given by a constant minus gamma. And it's negative because it, the temperature decreases. 
with height. And in the book they use this symbol for convection. So let's look a little bit more about at this capital gamma here. Capital gamma is called the adiabatic lapse rate. And what does that mean? It is the change in temperature T of an air parcel that changes its elevation or that rises up without putting heat in or moisture or taking heat or moisture out. Yeah, so you just contain your air parcel and you lift it up and you look whether it cools off or warms up and you're not heating it or making it wetter or whatever and without heat or moisture in or out it, that is what the term adiabatic means now gamma is defined as acceleration due to gravity g divided by specific heat cp so CP is specific heat. What does specific heat mean? It's the energy that's needed to increase one kilogram of air by one Kelvin. So, for example, for dry air, specific heat of air is about one kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. Yeah? So you have to put in one kilojoule to raise a parcel of air that weighs one kilogram to raise its temperature by one Kelvin. And if you plug this CP, this one, into the equation for gamma up here, you'll find that the lapse rate is about 10 Kelvin per kilometer. So that just means that if you were to go up one kilometer from sea level up a mountain that's one kilometer high, it would be 10 Kelvin cooler if you went up a mountain that's eight kilometers high, it would be 80 Kelvin cooler. But that's just for dry air. Typically, the atmosphere isn't dry, it's moist to varying degrees. And so typically, for a moist atmosphere, you will have the specific heat somewhere between 1 and 2 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. And a typical lapse rate in the real world is between 6 and 7 Kelvin per kilometer. So the temperature doesn't drop off quite that much. But still, if you run up a mountain, you'll notice it eventually that it gets cooler quite substantially. So 2 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin is roughly the specific heat for pure water vapor. Okay, so that concludes my discussion of the troposphere. Now let's talk about the stratosphere.